Welcome to LoadRunner 9. LoadRunner 9 introduces a new method for analyzing load test results, the Service Level Agreement, or SLA. You can define SLA criteria for a load test when creating the load test in the controller or before viewing the load test results in analysis. These SLA criteria are used to analyze the results in analysis. The analysis summary report displays a list of the five worst transactions in the load test, a scenario behavior over time section that shows the time intervals in which the results exceeded the defined SLA goals, as well as a transaction summary. In addition, there is a transaction analysis report that helps you pinpoint problems by presenting correlations that occur during specific time ranges. Let us assume that we have run our load test with SLA goals defined in the controller. You can learn more about defining SLA goals for a load test in the LoadRunner 9 service level agreement demo. Let's open the load test results file in analysis. As you can see, the analysis view has changed from the previous version. In the Session Explorer on the left, the graph tree has been expanded and now, in addition to the graph list, includes data on transactions and SLAs. In a few minutes, you will understand these reports. The main change is that we can see all relevant data for our scenario in the main view while we analyze the load test results. In the Properties window on the left, we can see which filter has been applied to the session, as well as the graph granularity. The Controller Output Messages window displays the errors received during the load test. On the right of the screen, you can access the session raw data and graph data and view user notes. Each of these windows can be dragged and placed anywhere on the screen. The Summary Report includes data on the SLA goals that were defined in the controller. The first section shows the five worst transactions in the session. These are calculated based on their failure ratio and failure value. The failure ratio is the percentage of the load test in which the transaction response time exceeded the SLA goals. The failure value is the average percentage by which the transaction exceeded the SLA goal over the whole run. By clicking the plus sign, we expand each of these transactions and display a list of problematic time ranges. We then select one of these time ranges and click the Analyze Transaction button to analyze it in more detail. Transaction Analysis is a new feature that Analysis 9 introduces. It enables us to analyze the cause of problems with transaction response time. By selecting one of the problematic time intervals and clicking the Analyze Transaction button, analysis takes the session data as well as all the measurements that were collected during the session and correlates this data with the transaction response time during the selected time interval. Analysis tries to find correlations between the transaction response time and other measurements. These correlations can be either negative or positive. In the transaction analysis report that opened for the order flight transaction, we can see correlations between the selected transaction and all other measurements in the test. A high correlation ratio between a transaction and its measurement might indicate a performance problem in the time interval being analyzed. For all correlations displayed on the screen, you can open the appropriate graph by clicking the graph icon. In addition, any errors that occurred during that time are displayed. The transaction analysis report shows the correlations based on a default ratio as can be seen above the list. You can adjust this ratio and click the Recalculate button to display new correlations. For example, if the correlation ratio is 80%, this means that there was at least an 80% correlation between the behavior of the selected measurement and the transaction response time. This indicates a high correlation ratio. In this example, we can see that there are no measurements with such a high correlation ratio. The same analysis can be done in the Scenario Behavior Over Time section of the Analysis Summary Report. 
Here we can see the behavior of the transaction in terms of the SLA goals over the whole load test. Above the transaction data, we can see the average errors per second that were received for each time interval. We can select any time range by selecting the squares and clicking the Analyze Transaction button. The Transaction Analysis Report opens. If we would like to run a load test according to different SLA criteria, we can open the SLA Configuration Wizard in Analysis and define new SLA goals for our load test. Analysis automatically interprets the data according to the new criteria and updates the summary report. It is important to note that even if we had not defined an SLA goal, we could still analyze a transaction in more detail. To do this, on the Reports menu, we select Analyze Transaction. In the dialog box that opens, we select the transaction and time range we want to analyze. The tree in the left pane shows a list of suggested time intervals based on the correlation ratio defined in the Settings dialog box. When we select a time interval, the relevant data is shown in the graph in the right pane. We click the Generate Report button to create the Transaction Analysis Report. This demonstration has shown you how the new features in LoadRunner Analysis give you a quick understanding of load test performance. We can use the data to analyze load tests in more depth using the Analyze Transaction feature, or just add the data to one of the reports that summarizes load tests. To learn more about the new features in Analysis, see the HP LoadRunner Analysis User's Guide.